In this tutorial, we're going to put condensation on the bottle. This applies to the 3D can tutorial that uh, you may be familiar with as well. So I've gone in and I've put these um, bits of condensation in with the pen tool, but I'd like to have an overall pattern that quite often happens when uh, a cold surface meets the hot surface, say in the cityscape. So I'm going to start out by creating a new layer above the bottle itself. So I'll go down to my layer window, I'll click on the new layer icon, the little page icon with the left hand lower corner turned up, and I'll name that condensation. Now I want to make sure that I've got my default black and white on my toolbar. So I'll hit D. And that gives me true black and true white. I'm going to fill that layer with black. Uh, I can use my paint bucket tool. I can hit G and then grab the paint bucket tool from there and click inside. Or I can hit Option Delete. And now you'll have a completely solid black layer. Now what we want to do is we want to go up to Filter and we want to go down to Render Difference clouds. Now what will happen is you'll see a combination of the black and white that was on the toolbar. But that's not quite what we want. We want something a little bit more defined. So I'm simply going to go up to filter and I'll click on difference clouds again and it generates another variation. And I could continue to do so and you'll see each time you do click on that you get a variation on that pattern. Now this is pretty good because it gives me a pretty uh, well-defined areas of white and black. So I'm going to get my wand tool. I'll hit W or I'll click on the wand tool. And I'm going to make the tolerance 10 is probably good. And I'm going to click on the darkest area I can find on that layer. Now once I've got it started, if I still uh, am on my wand tool, I can right click and I can choose similar. And it's going to grab all the pixels that are similar to this first selection that I made. So once I've got my selection now, I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on Select and Mask. And I'm going to go to Smooth and I'm going to make that 100%. And you'll see that it's gotten quite a bit rounder and softer on these contours. And that's pretty much all we need to do with this. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm simply going to hit Delete. And what I'm left with is the white and gray values that were on that layer. So my objective now is to get it around the contour of the bottle. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to take my Shift key. And I'm going to scale that down to fit over the bottle. And I want this pattern to be a little tighter, so I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I'll right click and choose Duplicate and click OK. And I'll hit V to get my Move tool, and then I'm going to drag that up and line it up right above the original like so. Now I don't have to be too particular about where it meets here because we're going to be using blend modes and layer masks uh, to kind of uh, select what we want to keep and what we don't. So I'll simply merge those two down. So I'm going to right click on my layer and I'm going to choose Merge Down. And once again I'm going to save. Now I want this condensation to follow the contour of that bottle or if you've got the can it would be the same function. So I'm going to go to the layer with the actual bottle. And I'm going to hold down my Command key and I'm going to click on the thumbnail of the bottle. And when I do so, the marching ants have now been put on the layer with our condensation pattern. So all I need to do now is click on the layer mask icon. And the selection that we had made essentially tells the layer mask the shape we want. All right, so I'm going to hit Command S to save. And now I'm going to go through my blend modes to see if I can find one that uh, will suit my needs. So I'll make sure I'm on my Move tool, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to hit Plus. And if you continue to hit Plus, you'll notice that you're going through all those blend modes 
that you're aware of in your layer window. And you can see them change up here as you use that key function. So very often I'll go through them all and make note of the ones that seem like they were pretty good to me so that if I want to, I can come back to them after I've kind of experimented with all the variations that are possible with the blend modes. So I kind of like to overlay, so I think I'll probably go back and I'll simply click up here now and I'll choose Overlay. And I'll hit Command S to save. Now, often enough, uh, I'll use the bevel and emboss on this as well. I'm going to zoom in on this so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to go over to my layer of condensation. And I'm going to go down to FX and I'm going to choose bevel and emboss. I'm just going to move this to the side so I can see what's happening here. So I'm going to set the style to inner bevel. And then I'm going to soften this quite a bit. I'm trying to imagine this is water condensation on this. So I've softened it quite a bit, and I'm also going to reduce the depth. Uh, viscosity is how thick a liquid is, and water is very thin, so we don't really need uh, a real big bevel and emboss on this. So I'm really um, diminishing this. I've got my size at 3 got my depth at about 74. I still might go lower with this. Yeah, I think I'll probably stick with 43 on my depth and then my size 3. Softness, the softer I think the better, so I think I'll make my softness about 11 or 12 and I'll simply hit OK. Now, just from a design standpoint, it's a little overpowering to have this on the entire bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in now with my brush and I'm just going to remove some of the excess where I think perhaps we wouldn't see it or we really don't need it. So I'll keep my brush um, a, on a soft setting and I'm going to start with about 50% opacity and then I'll just go around and I'll take out some of these areas that seem a bit overwhelming and overpowering to my design. Now I've got some in here and I think Perhaps, depending on your, your label design, you may find it more desirable not to have it directly on the label. Uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to take a little bit more out in here, but I'm going to drop my opacity of my brush to about 20%. And I'll just kind of reduce that a little more. And that's pretty much the technique.